good afternoon today we are going to study a topic of immunology that is complement system which is a part of your sem 4 syllabus okay so complement system it is a part of your semester 4 syllabus in immunology which is a part of uh, zoology so today's topic that we are going to discuss are history of complement introduction to different complement proteins the general properties components of the complement system and the pathways of activation of complement system so first let us study the history of complement proteins so research on complement began in 1890s when Jules Baudet at the Institute Pasteur in Paris, he showed that the sheep antiserum to the bacterium Vibrio cholerae caused lysis of the bacteria. But heating the antiserum destroyed its bacteriolytic activity. He named those substances as allexins. Afterwards, Paul Elrich coined the term complement. So, it was seen that in 1890s, uh, Sir Jules Bordet, he first showed that in sheep antiserum, there are certain components which showed antibacterial property, but its activity got destroyed as it was heated. So, as the name complement system, it was identified as it is complementing the activity of antibodies and it is a heat labile component. What does that mean? Heat labile means as we heat the component, it will uh, break down and it is consisting of different types of proteins like serum and cell surface proteins involved in the defense against pathogens and tissue damage mediated by antibodies. What are the major effectors of complement? They are cellular and humoral branch of immune system and they also play a major role in both innate and adaptive immunity. There are about a 30, uh, on, uh, 30 proteins uh, which are part of this complement system. They are mainly serum proteins or cell surface proteins. Where are they synthesized? These complement proteins are synthesized in the liver. In the liver, they are synthesized as inactive precursors, but afterwards they are activated by proteolysis during their interaction, which we will see in the slides afterward in a sequential manner they are being activated. These complement proteins are also produced by blood monocytes, tissue macrophages, epithelial cells of the gastrointestinal and genitourinary tract. So, mainly you should remember that they are synthesized in the liver as inactive precursors and afterwards they are being activated. So, now let us come to the general properties of complement proteins. So, in general they are being present in all animals, in the serum of all on animals. And uh, another property of complement is that complement of one species are able to react with the antibodies of other species, but not to the same, same extent up to a little bit they can react. And it constitutes about 5 percent of the normal serum proteins. And what is the nature of these complement proteins? They are glycoprotein in nature. They are also synthesized in inflammatory responses. Hence, they are also called acute phase proteins. So, complement proteins are also called acute phase proteins when they are involved in inflammatory response. Previously, I have told that the complement proteins are heat labile and what does that mean? It means these proteins can be broken down when they are heated at up to a certain temperature. For example, if they are uh, heated at 50 de 56 degree Celsius for 30 minutes, these proteins will be inactivated and they will be degraded. So, immunoglobulins and if we see immunoglobulins, they are not inactivated at this temperature. 
these complement proteins bind to the FC portion of immunoglobulins. So, we know that immunoglobulins have a FAB portion and a FC portion. FC portion is where the complement proteins bind to. So, coming to the next slide, here we can see there are three main effectors of complement. What are they or the effects of complement rather that is complement protein they can call uh, cause cell lysis means the they can break down the cells. What kind of cells like bacterial cells, tumor cell, allografts, generation of mediators of inflammation, complement proteins can generate inflammation okay, in the body. And the third one is opsonization, it is a new term, but it is very important part of phagocytosis that is it enhances phagocytosis. Opsonization in uh, afterwards we will see that phagocytosis is enhanced by this phenomena. Okay, so, remember these three effects that bacterial cell lysis, inflammatory mediator and opsonization. So, there are several components of this complement system. As I have already told that they are serum proteins or they are, they are cell surface proteins and their number is almost 30. So, the complement system are being designated by certain numbers. What are the numbers like C1, C2, C3 up to C9 or it can be also be denoted by letters like factor D. And in normal state or in serum, they are in inactivated form and afterwards they are being activated sequentially. The complement receptors, the, that is the receptors for the complement protein, they are present on the cell surface. There are also certain regulatory proteins of complement, which can inhibit the action of these complement proteins. They are present both in serum and cell surface. So, the complement proteins are proenzymes that is they are inactivated enzymes which will be activated afterwards by cleavage. What are the examples? There are several examples. So, one such is C4. So, C4 is made up of two subunits C4A and C4B. C4 is broken down to C4A and C4B where A is the smaller fragment and B is the larger fragment. So, in complement system the smaller fragment moves out through diffusion and B which is the larger fragment that remains bound to the microbial surface. Only one exception is there that is C2. In this case the A fragment is larger and B is the smaller fragment. So, in most of the cases you will see that the A fragment is smaller and B is larger, but one exception you should remember that is C2. In this case C2 A is the C2 A is the larger fragment and C2 B is the smaller fragment. So, what are the three pathways of complement activation? The complement we have up till now we have uh, learned about the components of complement protein, where are they synthesized, how are they named. Now, the complement proteins need to be activated to cause cell lysis, bacterial cell lysis, to cause inflammation or to cause opsonization. So, there are three pathways of complement activation. The first is classical pathway second alternative pathway and the third is lectin pathway. The classical pathway is antibody dependent pathway and it is triggered by formation of soluble antigen antibody complex or by binding of the antibody to the antigen present on the target cell surface. So, what does that mean? That means in classical pathway it is dependent on antibody this pathway is dependent on antibody without the presence of antibody this pathway will not be activated. So, you can say that it is a part of adaptive immunity. Next the alternative pathway, alternative pathway is antibody independent pathway 
Okay. So, here we do not need antibody to activate this pathway, it is stimulated by the antigen itself. Example, bacterial cell surface components. So, the presence of bacterial cell surface components like the lipopolysaccharides will directly trigger this pathway and the third is lectin pathway. It is also antibody independent and it resembles, but it resembles the classical pathway. So, this pathway we need to study in detail which we will study in the coming slides. So, next is the, uh, the stages of complement activation. Okay. So, uh, these stages are common for all the three pathways that I have just told. That is the uh, um, your classical alternative and lectin pathway these three stages are common. First is the formation of C3 convertase, second formation of C5 convertase and finally, there is a complex formation that is called membrane attack complex or MAC. So, the formation of C3 convertase is different in classical and alternative pathway. So, this I am not telling in detail, you will see the diagram and you will understand afterwards and they follow ultimately they merge into a common pathway or a common route that is the generation of membrane attack complex. In all the three pathways, there is a main component that is the production of C3B. C3B it is the central molecule of the complement cascade. So, question may come that why C3B is a central molecule of complement cascade? Because it has many important roles or important functions you can say. It combines with other complement proteins to generate C5 convertase. So, if C3B is not present, C5 convertase will not form and the enzyme that leads to the production of membrane attack complex. Also C3B is a very good opsonin. So, what is opsonin? That we will study that it which helps in opsonization. So, it opsonizes bacteria because phagocytes have receptor for C3B on their surface. Next is the classical pathway. So, we have uh, just read that there are three pathways, classical pathway, alternative and lectin. So, classical pathway as the name suggests, it is the first pathway to be studied and it requires antibody to get stimulated. Okay. So, as it requires antibody, we can say that it is a part of acquired immunity or adaptive immunity. Okay. So, from birth classical pathway will not be activated, it will be activated only after um, stimulation or in, uh, encounter with outside or um, foreign germs or uh, infection. So, antigen antibody complex will activate the complement protein C1 to form a protease. So, then it will cleave two more complements that is C2 and C4 and it will form a complex that is called C4B2A. Okay, I will show you the diagram so that you can understand. Just look at the leftmost diagram, do not see the other pathways, only see the classical pathway. So, in the classical pathway you can see that C1 is activated which in turn cleaves C4 and C2 releasing the smaller fragments that is C2A and C4A. So, what is remaining C4B, C4B and 2A just a minute let me show you this diagram it will be better yes see this one classical pathway when the antigen antibody complex sits on the C1 complex or it binds uh, C1 complex rather it binds to the antibody FC portion of the antibody it gets activated and then it cleaves C4 and C2 
C4A is released as C4A is a smaller fragment and in case of C2, C2A is released, okay. I have just told, sorry, C2B is released as I have just told that exception is C2 where B is the smaller fragment. So, what is formed? C4B2A. C4B2A is also called C3 convertase, okay. And the bar you are seeing on the uh, written on the uh, on the top of C4B2A or over the head of C4B2A that means it is enzymatically active. It can cleave C3, okay. So, C4B2A will act as a C3 convertase. Convertase means it will, it can convert C3 or it can break C3. So, C3 will be broken and then it will form C3A and C3B, okay. Then what we will form? It will form C4B2A3B. C4B2A3B is called C5 convertase. That means out of C3, C3A is released and C3B remains. So, it is forming C4B2A3B. Another name of it is C5 convertase. C5 convertase can again cleave C5. So, C5 is broken down and C5A is released, only C5B is there. Now, C5B will bind to the other complement proteins. In this diagram, you can see in the right side that C5B binds to C6, C7, C8, C9. Ultimately, it forms a complex that is C5B, 6, 7, 8, 9. The name of this complex is membrane attack complex, okay. So, again I am going to this write up C. Now, let us again revise this antigen antibody complex activate C1 to form a protease which cleave C2 and C4 to form C4B2A complex and what is split off C2A and C4B moves out of this pathway. C4B2A is C3 convertase. It is also called C3 convertase. Why such name? Because it can break C3. So, C3 will be broken into two fragments C3A and C3B. C3A splits off and C3B remains. So, C3B now forms a complex with C4B2A producing a new enzyme called C5 convertase. So, C5 convertase is composed of C4B2A3B. So, C as the name suggests C5 convertase that means it can cleave C5. So, cleaving C5 will give C5A and C5B. So, C5B will ultimately form the membrane attack complex. It will bind to C6 and C7 to form a complex that will interact with C8 and C9 to produce the membrane attack complex. So, it is made up of C5B6789. Here you can see that as we are writing, we are not repeating the complement C, we are just writing the numbers. Okay, which means the same and it ultimately the membrane attack complex causes cytolysis or breakdown of the bacterial cell. Here one thing you should remember that complement fixation is done by two types of or two classes of immunoglobulins IgM and IgG, immunoglobulin M and immunoglobulin G. The other types of immunoglobulins like IgA, IgD, IgE, they are not involved in complement fixation. Mostly IgM and IgG takes part in complement fixation. So, in case of classical pathway, first we have seen that C1 is bound to antibody. So, C1 is a complex, it is a complex made up of C1Q, R2S2. C1Q is an aggregate of actually 18 polypeptides that binds to the FC portion of an antibody. And what kind of antibody? IgG or IgM. It is a multivalent and it can cross link several immunoglobulin molecules. 
So, C1 S, the S portion of the C1 complement protein is cleaved to form an active protease, which we will see that it cleaves C4 and C2. Okay. So, just uh, I have discussed this diagram that how it is being activated and C4 B and C2 A are produced ultimately C3 convertase which can cleave C5. So, forming C5 convertase, uh, C5 convertase can cleave C5, then uh, C5 uh, form after this the formation of MAC. So, this we have seen. What are the components of membrane attack complex? So, the membrane attack complex is composed of C5 B, C6, C7, C8 and C9. What about C5 A? C5 A is actually not a uh, component of the complex, but it mediates inflammation, anaphylatoxin, chemotaxis. So, there are certain functions that is uh, carried out by this subunit and the other subunits like C5 B, C6, C7, C8 and C9, these five uh, components form the membrane attack complex. So, this diagram that you are seeing here is an actual uh, microscopic image which shows the binding of a membrane attack complex at the extreme right top right side you can see the membrane attack complex formation and its binding with the uh, pathogenic surface leading to swelling and lysis of the cell. Okay, another diagram I am showing you. This is the diagram where you can see the as the complement proteins are binding to the cell surface of a bacteria, it causes uh, uh, you can say that uh, there are formation of different holes in the bacterial cell surface and as there is formation of holes the liquid or the fluid is uh, just rushing out or in rushing fluids into the cell and the cell is swelling and it is bursting. So, in this way the membrane attack complex actually causes cell lysis. Okay. So, coming to the next pathway which is the alternative pathway. So, as uh, in the classical pathway we have seen that there is the requirement of antibody, in this pathway we do not require antibody to activate this uh, pathway, it is antibody independent pathway. And uh, so, how this pathway is activated? It is activated by the presence of many different types of uh, substances like the cell surface molecules of bacterial surface like bacterial lipopolysaccharides, fungal cell wall, viral envelope which can initiate the process by binding directly to C3 and factor B. So, in this case we do not require C1 or C2 in this case as we have seen in the previous one C1 was there, but it is starting directly with C3 and also it is antibody independent. This complex is cleaved by a protease uh, named factor D, which produce C3B, BB. This acts as a C3 convertase to generate more C3B. So, whatever I have written here, we will see in the diagram or in the pathway and we will understand there. Alternative pathways are more important. Why it is more important? Because it does not require antibody for its activation. So, from birth we, um, we are getting the help of this pathway. So, the first time we are infected by a microorganism, the antibody required to trigger the classical pathway is not present. So, but the first time whenever we are getting infection, we are getting the help of this alternative pathway. Usually activated by products of microorganism as we have just discussed. So, what are the other activators of this pathway? the complexes containing like immunoglobulin A, some virus infected cells, many gram negative and gram positive organisms, parasites, erythrocytes or carbohydrates like agarose, they can stimulate this pathway. Okay. 
So, there are several components of this pathway like C3A, C3B, factor B, another are uh, several path uh, components like BA, BB, factor D, proper D. Out of this, you should remember factor D and proper D because the other um, components I have just discussed, they have already been present in classical pathway, but in the alternative pathway you will see the presence of factor D. So, factor D is important to cleave factor B okay? and these factors are nothing, but they are the names of different complement proteins. And what is properdin? Properdin is a protein which will bind and it will stabilize the membrane bound C3B, BB. So, let us see this pathway. So, this is the pathway. So, it starts with C3. How it is getting stimulated or activated? By the presence of microbial cell surface components. It can be any lipopolysaccharide or any kind of proteins or fungal cell wall. So, when C3 binds directly to these microbial cell surface components, C3 is broken down. C3 is broken down into C3A and C3B. Then C3B will bind to another um, factor that is factor B in the presence of the factor D. Then factor B will be cleaved, it will be cleaved into BA and BB, BA will be uh, diffused out of the pathway and BB remains. So, what is formed? C3B, BB and then you can see the presence of P and what P stands for? P stands for properdin. Okay. So, properdin is that protein which stabilizes this complex and the name of this complex is C3 convertase. C3 convertase means what? It can cleave C3. Okay. It can cleave C3 into C3A and C3B. So, C3 is broken down into C3A and C3B. C3A is moved out, C3B remains. So, now what forms? C3B, BB, 3B. So, there are certain names that you have to remember, not remember when you uh, are drawing this pathway, you will just, um, you can remember this names. Okay? So, C3B, BB, 3B and the bar you can see uh, above the name of this pathway is it shows that it is enzymatically active. So, another name is C5 convertase. C5 convertase can cleave C5 into C5A and C5B. C5A moves out and what remains? C5B. Then C5B will bind to the other members of the complement protein or the pathway that is C6, C7, C8, C9 ultimately forming the membrane attack complex which is same as the classical pathway. Okay. The, uh, that is the MAC the, uh, formation that complex is same in all the three pathways C5B, 6, 7, 8, 9 whether in case of classical, alternative or lectin pathway. So, in this case MAC is formed and again there will be cell lysis. So, we can see how this complement proteins help in uh, the uh, activity of different antibodies in bacterial cell lysis. Okay, the same thing is written here, you can see, but uh, the above portion is of classical pathway and the below portion that is below the line what we have seen that is the parts of alternative pathway. And the final image that we can see it is of MAC the, where the cell swells and burst because the MAC has um, formed a cylindrical membrane attack complex on the surface of a bacteria. Okay. So, the final thing or the final pathway out of the three pathways that we are discussing is the lectin pathway. It is also called as the mannose binding lectin pathway. Why such name mannose binding lectin? Because mannose is a sugar and the polymer of the sugar is called mannan it is present on the surface of different microbes okay. and these uh, to the mannose or mannan protein uh, there is a 
protein present in our system that is called mannose binding lectin or mannan binding lectin. It is also known as mannose binding protein. It can bind to that mannan sugar and it can trigger the lectin pathway. So, it is written that in the lectin pathway mannan binding lectin also known as mannose binding protein binds to the surface of microbes bearing mannan that is a polymer of the sugar mannose. So, what is the mannan sugar? It is a cell surface sugar present in bacteria which acts as a uh, indicator or you can say it, um, it can serve as a antigenic uh, identifier for our body. So, that is why MBL protein binds to the mannan and it can trigger the activation of this pathway. So, this pathway is also antibody independent that you should remember. So, out of the three pathways that we have studied alternative pathway and lectin pathway they both do not require the help of antibody to get activated. Only classical pathway requires antibody to get activated. Okay. So, that means the lectin pathway is also present from birth or it is also a part of you can say the you know, innate immunity, but the uh, uh, classical pathway which requires antibody to get activated it is a part of acquired immunity. So, binding of mannose binding lectin causes activation of a serine protease. What is its name? It is name is MASP that is mannose binding protein associated serine protease. Okay. So, as uh, the mannose binding protein binds to the mannan which is present on the surface of microbes, it causes activation of a serine protease that is MASP and it cleaves C2 and C4 which is exactly what it uh, what happens in the case of classical pathway. So, in classical pathway also C2 and C4 are getting cleaved and then the cycle starts. So, or the pathway starts in similar way in lectin pathway also there is cleavage of C2 and C4 and there is activation of the classical pathway. So, one thing that you should remember that this process bypasses the antibody requiring step and so it is is protective early in infection before antibody is formed. So, before antibody is, is formed this pathway gets activated. So, how is this pathway activated? Again through this diagram we can see that the first step is binding of mannose binding lectin MBL to mannose residue on the surface of microbes. Okay. So, the surface of microbes contains mannose sugar to it binds the mannose binding lectin protein and to the MBL found to bound to microbe the MBL associated serine protease like MASPs what kind of MASP? MASP 1 and 2 they will bind and get activated. So, MASP 1 and 2 they are similar in structure and function like C1S and C1R. So, where we have studied C1S and C1R just a few minutes prior we have studied that C1S and C1R were present in classical pathway. So, just like classical pathway or the structure also the C1S and C1R they have structural similarity with MASP1 and MASP2. This complex will cleave C4 and C2. So, in the diagram we can see that to the uh, complement protein uh, or the MASP1 and MASP2 this complex will cleave the complement protein C4 and C2. In this diagram in the from the left to the right we can see the activated MASP2 they cleave C4 into C4A and C4B. Some C4B binds covalently to the microbial surface. Then in the next diagram activated MASP2 also cleave C2 into C2A and C2B. 
then C2A binds to the surface C4B forming the classical C3 convertase. So what was the name of the C3 convertase in the classical pathway? C4B2A. Similarly, here also the name of the C3 convertase is C4B2A. Then C4B2A binds C3 and cleaves it to C3A and C3B because it is C3 convertase. So it will cleave C3, it will cleave C3 into C3A and C3B. C3B then binds covalently to the microbial surface. As we have already studied that C3B is a crucial component of the classical, all the three classical pathways. So as C3B binds covalently to the microbial surface, it will lead to the formation of afterwards in the, to the formation of C5 convertase and ultimately the formation of membrane attack complex. So in this uh, four following diagrams we can see that the smaller fragments are diffusing out like C4A has diffused out or C2A has diffused out and what remains the larger fragment. Okay? So you have to remember certain these small things. But the as the smaller fragment diffuses out, they have certain important functions too. We will uh, discuss it as, uh, afterwards that what are the function of these smaller fragments. So see, what are the biological effects of the complement? What are the effect that they are doing? So some effects we have studied like bacterial cell lysis, uh, inflammation, opsonization. So see opsonization, opsonization means what? Opsonization means this is the phenomena by which phagocytosis is enhanced and which cells perform this phagocytosis? Phagocytic cells like uh, macrophage, monocytes, so they are a main player of phagocytosis. So the small components of complement like C3B, C1Q they are very good in opsonization. What does they do? They coat the bacterial surface. Okay. So making it more susceptible for phagocytosis, for the macrophage to bind to the uh, bacterial surface and engulf it. Okay. So, so that is why these complement like C3B, C1Q, they are called opsonins. Okay. So opsonins are those proteins which enhances phagocytosis. Then complement proteins also facilitates chemotaxis. Chemotaxis means the process of attracting uh, the leukocytes, especially the neutrophils into the, uh, to the site of infection or the site of um, the target site that is C5A and C5, 6, 7, this complex it attracts neutrophils. So C5A is a chemotactic agent which enhances the adhesiveness of neutrophils to the endothelial surface. Okay? So C5A what it does? It enhances the neutrophil attachment to the endothelial surface. So they are chemotactic agents. Okay, and the, what is the meaning of chemotaxis? Chemo means chemical, taxis means movement. That is the movement of uh, any cell via chemicals. Third is anaphylatoxin. So what is anaphylatoxin? It is related to hypersensitivity and inflammation. So what are anaphylatoxins? What are the examples? The examples are C3A, C4A, C5A. So there are certain examples that you have to remember. So these anaphylatoxins what they do? They are part of hypersensitivity reactions like in type 1 hypersensitive reaction they cause degranulation of the mast cells. Okay? The mast as these uh, anaphylatoxins bind to the mast cell surface, it causes the granules inside the mast cells to be broken or to be degranulated which ultimately causes hypersensitive reactions. Anaphylatoxins can also bind to the smooth muscles of the bronchioles in the lungs and, the bron and causes bronchospasm. 
which is another type of uh, allergic reaction or hypersensitive reaction. So, the complement proteins are also a part of uh, allergic reactions. Next number 4 is cytolysis or the cell lysis. What we, are, we were studying throughout that the formation of MAC or membrane attack complex which the complex binds to the surface of the microbe. It um, produces different holes and disrupts the membrane and there is a lot of inrushing of water and electrolytes into the cell resulting in bursting of the cell. Okay. And the fifth one is enhancement of antibody production. So, the term complement itself says that it complements the function of antibody or it helps antibody. So, it helps antibody in its production too. Binding of C3B to the receptor or to its receptor, where are the receptors located? On the surface of activated B cells. So, activated B cell surface have receptors for C3B. Whenever C3B binds to the activated B cell surface, it causes enhanced antibody production. So, antibody production increases on binding of C3B to the B cell surface. So, there is these are certain biological effects of complement that you should re remember that is opsonization, chemotaxis, anaphylatoxin, cytolysis and enhancement of antibody production. So, just as I have discussed opsonization, there is one uh, diagram which shows the process of opsonization. In this uh, diagram you can see the complement proteins which are denoted by the circles, bacterium a rod shaped bacterium. The opsonins like C3 B they are binding to the surface of the bacteria. And on the other side you can see a phagocytic cell which has some receptors for the complement proteins. Okay. The blue colored uh, receptors you can see these are the uh, receptors for the complement proteins where the complement protein can bind. Next you can see the complement protein which is bound to the bacteria is again binding to the bacteria uh, to the phagocytic cell. Then the whole complex is getting engulfed that is causing phagocytosis. So, the four steps that you can see of opsonization and phagocytosis where the complement proteins are binding to the bacterium and the complement proteins are also getting bound to the uh, cell receptors of the phagosomes or the phagocytic cells. Ultimately, the phagocytic cell is engulfing the entire complex causing phagocytosis. So, example of a very good opsonin is C3B. Opsonins are molecules that bind both to the bacteria and phagocytes and opsonization it increases phagocytosis by 1000 fold. Okay. So, uh, that is why opsonization is very important because the phagocytosis the phenomena or the process of phagocytosis is enhanced by 1000 fold by this process. So, in this diagram or flow chart we are getting the three pathways together okay, like the classical pathway, the lectin pathway and the alternative pathway. All the pathways are being shown together how they are interacting and how they are merging into uh, uh, the amplification phase. So, first is the initiation phase where the complement is getting stimulated and the pathway is starting. Then it is the signal is amplified uh, where there is formation of C3 convertase and then the formation of C5 convertase and ultimately the effector phase. So, in the effector phase the C3 convertase is uh, activating the C5 convertase, C5 convertase is cleaving C5 into C5A and C5B, C5B remains in the circle or, or in the pathway and it activates the other complement proteins like C6, C7, C8, C9 ultimately forming the membrane attack complex. So, we can see in ultimately or the ultimate goal of this uh, 
pathways is the formation of MAC and cell lysis. Okay. So, this is all about uh, the three pathways of complement proteins, classical, alternative and lectin and the things that you should remember here that classical pathway is triggered by antibody, the presence of antibody without the presence of antibody or the formation of antibody antigen complex, this pathway is not stimulated. Whereas, the lectin pathway or the alternative pathway, they are stimulated without antibody. Just the presence of bacterial uh, cell surface proteins like bacterial lipopolysaccharide layer or any kind of tumor cell or apoptotic cell, the alternative pathway is activated. Whereas, in the lectin pathway, the presence of mannose on the surface of microbes stimulate this pathway where mannose binding lectin binds to mannose uh, on the surface of microbes and this stimulate the pathway. So, this is all about today's class. Thank you.